This is Judy Rogers from the St. Francis Parish in Rocky Mount. Good morning, I'm Judy Rogers. I'm a convert to the Catholic faith, having been raised Southern Baptist, spending my life wanting to be Catholic, and I converted five years ago. I'm here today in support of seeking justice for Father Mark White. I would like to share with you a few lines from a letter that I sent to the prefect for the Congregation of Bishops in Rome in early July, I did not receive an acknowledgement or reply of any thing, of any kind. Excuse me. Um, I wrote to them supporting Father Mark, who at that time had been suspended from ministry by the bishop. And I, one of the things that I commented in my letter was that Father Mark's writing about such problems are not a first. In Jude verse three. Four, we can read, Beloved, being eager to write to you of our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For admission has been secretly gained by some who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly persons who pervert the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ." End quote. And I did mention in my letter to him that I was concerned about the fact that we've known about a lot of this for many years, we've done payoffs, and yet nothing has happened. And I also included that in addition to the sexual scandal, we have learned of the gross misuse of funds by some members of a hierarchy who lived in mansions, enjoyed lives of luxury and self-indulgence, all of which in no way reflected the life lived by our Savior Jesus Christ while he was on earth. One of the points I did mention in my letter that appeal had been filed, I tried to make them aware that I had knowledge of what was going on. I felt it was important to tell them this. It is Bishop Nesthaus contention that Father White's blog and actions caused discord among the faithful. I disagree. It is my belief that the actions of the bishop have done far more damage to faith and the image of the Catholic Church than anything Father White ever said or wrote. I included in my letter that Father Mark had attempted to reconcile with the bishop, including offers of an apology if anything he said or wrote had been offensive to others. I also mentioned in my letter that the Declaration of Human Rights, Article 19, which every pope for the last 60 years has endorsed, covers the right to freedom of opinion and expression, to hold opinions without interference, and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media. And that included, in my opinion, his blog. And I emphasized in my letter that I felt it was time for the bishop to practice the forgiveness that the church teaches. Christ, while on earth, repeatedly chastised the Pharisees for their hypocrisy, for not practicing what they preached. I believe that forgiveness is at the heart of our faith, and I included this in my letter. This is what we are taught, what we preach, what we tell the world we forgive. Jesus, as he hung dying on the cross, said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Simon Peter denied Jesus three times, yet Christ loved him and received him back as his own. He did not punish him or seek revenge against him. We are required to practice forgiveness. It is not optional. And in closing my letter, I stated that I felt the bishop had not demonstrated a willingness to practice the forgiveness that our church teaches for what he perceives to be Father White's transgressions. The best example he could give to this world would be to reconcile with Father Mark White. Instead, what the world sees is a bishop willing to hurt or destroy a beloved and faithful priest who dared to tell the truth about the sexual scandal. They see a man, the bishop, determined to do whatever he can to circumvent justice and force a good priest into submission. I did mention at the end that my prayer and my hope is that Father Mark White will receive a fair and just adjudication of his appeal and that a positive outcome for the bishop, Father White, and his parishioners will be forthcoming. Parish priest or bishop, both are priests of the same God. This, for, in closing, I, I shared this verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. For if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting. 
for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. And I commented in my letter that this is the priest that I know Father Mark White to be. He can be nothing less and be true to his calling from God as a priest and wish that all would be like him. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Judy.